Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here, Game from Scratch. And today we are talking about another DAW or digital audio workstation, basically a program for making music. And today we are talking about Zrhythm. Zrhythm is newish. We'll get to that in just a few seconds. But first, a little bit of an overview about Zrhythm and also a straight out warning. I suck at music. If you ever covered any of these, I always throw the standard. Your ears will bleed disclaimer at the beginning of these. And I am not kidding. I am really bad at music. So do be aware of that. So what is Zrhythm all about? Well, it is an highly automated and intuitive digital audio workstation. If you want to check it out, it is available at zrhythm.org. That is rhythm with a Z smashed in front of it. Uh, uh, if you are curious, it has limitless automation, multiple backends, uh, support for Jack Transport, ALSA, WASAPI, Windows MME, Core MIDI, Core Audio. It is free software under the GPL license. It is entirely open source. There are a number of audio plugins available for it, including LV2, VST2, experimental support for VST3, AU, SFZ, and SF2, and chord assistance, including chord pads for quickly trying out chords in a scale. And it is also multilingual with English, French, Galatia. Portuguese, Japanese, and German versions available. Uh, as I mentioned off the hop, this is an open source project. And the reason why we were talking about it today is just a couple days ago, the first alpha was released. Now I got to throw that word out there really, really strongly. Alpha. All right. So uh, expect problems. And the fact that uh, I really have to say this program, sort of like Ardor, uh, they really not Windows as the first platform. And you can really tell. Um, so on that topic, by the way, uh, you can download this guy in a couple different ways. There's a trial version available. It goes silent after 30 minutes. And you can't save or load. To be honest, I think this part is kind of stupid because a DAW that you can't save or load, that's already pretty significantly gimped. Uh, but at the same time, Ardor gives you like 10 minutes. So this is three times better than that. But I think this is a, a limitation that kind of isn't needed. So if you want, you basically what you're doing here is you're buying an installer. This is open source software. If you can build it yourself, big if, uh, you can grab it this way. And this is how they are supporting the project. They also have a subscription system that gives you access to nightly builds and uh, upgrades to new releases. So basically, you can pay five pounds and get an installer, or you can subscribe and get nightly builds and new versions all along. Uh, so really, you're going there for the, for the installer. But this guy is an open source project. As I mentioned earlier on, it is under the GPL license. You can go ahead and build this guy if you uh, so wish. Now, I think if you're on a Linux machine, that process, no problem at all. But uh, on Windows, on Windows, it's, uh, well, it's, it's error after error after error after error. Apparently, there's something about uh, CMake doesn't like if it can find shell in its path. And I have like three versions of shell installed. I got sick of debugging it at this point. This was after spending about 30 minutes on resolving things that were missing and so on. So yeah, I don't think this is sort of meant for Windows developers. It's still, it's got native compilation unlike Ardour. Uh, but again, building this on Windows was not fun. It is not the primary platform and that is very obvious. There is some, some reasonable documentation. There's also instructions on how to build on Windows, but you are going to run into snags. Just just be aware of that. Now, interestingly enough, in this one, uh, I am going to use a couple of loops. They are from the Mega Samples loop bundle that is going on right now. I am not musically inclined, so those are going to prove to be very useful. If you are interested, there are about two days left with that. So I'm going to link that down below. Uh, also, I've got the build instructions here. So if you want to try and build it yourself, you need to have Mingw uh, installed on your system. And then you're going to have to come up with a whole lot of things. I had to Pac-Man install about nine or eight, uh, eight or nine packages as error occurred. And, and then ultimately did work in the end anyways on my machine. But uh, if you want, the build instructions for Windows are available there, or you can try it out, which is what I'm doing here, a 30 minute version, let it run. Um, and, and we just can't save basically. So this is the rhythm. Let's go hands on. So first thing we're going to need to do obviously is start it. Now, when you first run it, actually, you're going to also get an error message on Windows that a certain DLL is missing. Just search that name. Uh, they've got pre-compiled binaries of the one you need. Just dump those files in the bin folder and you are good to go. All right, so here is the rhythm. Now, I'm going to be a little selective about what I touch uh, because at least on Windows, I can make things crash a whole lot. And I also got to admit straight out, I don't understand how to do certain things. A lot of DAWs, I've worked with about six or seven on this channel so far, and I've intuited them better than I have on this one. For example, chords here, I can't figure out how to direct this to output, and I don't know how to apply a, a, an instrument to it. Just, I, I just could not 
figure this out. I have no idea. So I basically, we're going to ignore that one. Uh, but here you got you basically where your composition goes. So just go ahead. We'll hide that track because it's kind of useless to us anyways. And we will show you how to go ahead and use things. Now, first, we're going to do things just straight out. You can create new uh, different kinds of tracks. We can add an audio track or a MIDI track. And then we got FX tracks for both controlling audio and MIDI. And then we can also do groups. So I'm going to just come here. We're going to do this pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and create a um, audio track. But what I'm just going to do is I'll bring in a sample. So we'll go over here to those downloads. I'll grab some dope beats. So again, this came from that currently running Humble. Uh, I think again, two days left, at least at the time of this video. And we'll just go down here and grab something somewhat randomly. I want to do, eh, let's do 120 beats per minute. That's solid. All right, so we're going to drop that in here. You're going to see it shows up in just a second. So there we go. So there is our first track. We can go right ahead and play it down here. Hey, I'm not too bad as long as I stick to samples. All right, so we have a looping track in. We're going to probably want to, change our timeline up so that it it gets close. That should have actually matched it. I don't know what. Come on. Okay, so I can't snap to anything other than six. So we're just going to stick there. And now we've got, so we brought that guy in. Let's bring in another one. Uh, so go back here to loops. We'll go back and grab a different one. So we'll go into the soul vocals and we'll get some instrumental loops here. And I'll go 110 BPM. Drop that guy in right there. And there. All right, so we've got We've got a guitar going and we've got our uh, dope beat in the background. Now we can actually easily resize these guys so that they they roughly match up. So we'll bring that guy to there and then we'll shorten to match. All right, so here we have our sound now. It's not bad. All right, so we got a bit of a sound going on at this point in time. Now we could do a couple of things at this point. Also, we, we could have a, a metronome going. So hear that beep? you know, for tracking how, you know, our music sounds. We can also change the size of our notes right here, but I am not going to do that because every single time I have pressed this button, I have crashed. So let's not do that. So instead, what we're going to do is go ahead and show some of the VST support here. So we're going to create a MIDI track here. You can create a MIDI track this way. It doesn't work right for me. So instead, I'm just going to basically go ahead. This is a VST I have installed from actually a previous Humble Bundle. It's a guitar. Um, this is a VST2 support here. So I'm just going to go in. We've got our guitar track. You see drum sessions right down here. Our uh, This is the VST control panel over here. So now what I can do is just right, sorry, left click, and then we create our guitar track. Let's size the guitar track to match everything else. And then down here, you can see our, um, our editor for it. So now we can just basically start doing notes. So you're going to start, you're going to get eighth notes every single time to start. And again, if I press this button, we are going to crash. So I'm not going to press that button. What I can do is basically we can drag the note out to the length we want it to be like so. And then we just start basically creating our awesome guitar track. And of course, if you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up, you can handle it this way on the topic of that. All right, so let's just call one more note here. All right. All right, so there is our lovely track. If I want to hear just one, I can put it in solo mode. We can go ahead and play that. Oh, yeah, metronome's still on there. So there is our, our uh, guitar track at this point in time. We obviously could play around with it over here. So if we want to add some reverb or take that away, a little bit of a delay on there, change the compression out, and test. All right, so there we go. We have our unit. If, by the way, if you want to bring that back up at any time, just click there and up it comes. Uh, if you've got your own keyboard, you can configure everything up here. Just go ahead to this little gear icon. Your MIDI backends are available here. Uh, I don't have any MIDI devices hooked up, so we're good to go. But if you had your own keyboard, you could wire it right there. Uh, you can also channel. So, okay, you got to restart for things to take effect. If you have an effects channel here for MIDI or whatever, you can link it on here. I, this is problematic for me, though. All right, so is it send slots? Da, da, da. No, it's in the, it's here. It should be here. All right. Again, I am having a little bit of trouble figuring out this user interface. And at the same time, anyways, so that's, you can have it, you can pass it through. It should be here. I should be able to go into this guy and pick the MIDI effect right here, but I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know why I'm not able to select it. And I'm only getting options as none. And then ditto here. I can't select anything. So I, I'm, again, not 100% certain what's going on with certain things, unfortunately. And that is part of being an alpha. And that is also part of being a secondary platform at this point in time. But that's how you kind of start stringing things together. Now you say, might want to go ahead. Let me just delete that track because I'm not using it. 
And all right, you deleted the wrong track. Let's see if we get undo support. All right, there we go. So we got our uh, strum session back. I was going to go ahead here now showcase automation. So we can bring in automation here. We can control, uh, in this case, the balance, the mute, or so on, or we can control things over our instrument. We got a ton of control over the instrument. So this is where your automation comes in place. So there's also a scripting language you can use based on, oh, I forget the actual language. It was a scheme-based language. So you could script just about everything in this guy as well. So if you want to come in here, we'll just do, uh, for example, volume. So we could do volume. All right, so there's the volume. And we control that over the length of the unit. We come on over here and we can basically start randomly shuffling the volume of that guy. So we could, uh, hey, we're still in solo mode. So, so you can see the volume, volume down, volume up, and so on. And it kind of all goes together. Everything works that way. The, um, the interface here is pretty Spartan in some ways. Over here, you've got uh, control over the various different uh, displays on this side. Ditto over here. You got access to your plugins. All your uh, your VSTs and so on are available here. Uh, and then down here, we've got access to your disk. And here, your monitor out. And that's kind of the gist of it up here. None of these are actually menus, even though they look like menus. What they are is toolbar toggles. And here's where you would save, export, and all those things. Unfortunately, this is all uh, limited. And actually, I don't, can I actually export in the limit? I, I didn't think that the tire, this version could actually export out your song, but interestingly enough, it looks like I can in a variety of different formats, AUG Vorbis, MP3, uh, MIDI file, and so on. Unfortunately, again, I am using the time limited demo. And on that topic, I'm going to wind things down shortly. So we've also got, again, got a mixer for handling all of the various different channels. Again, I have no idea how I can actually access this chord channel and set it so that it is part of the master channel. No clue. I haven't got a clue. I don't know if that's, again, a missing feature or me doing something stupid or whatever. Uh, ditto, I don't know how to get effects here to actually work. So some of this thing hasn't been immediately uh, intuitive. This here is the chord pad they were talking about earlier on. Uh, and then we got a little bit more options again right here. So let's go back here to our strum sessions. Uh, we can switch on to instrument mode there. Uh, so you've got a couple options here. And then finally, to conclude things, I will try to change the note timing. Hey, I didn't crash yet. That'd be the first time. Actually, I actually don't know how to change it, mind you. Oh, you use the scroll wheel. All right. So there you can change out your, your note length. And I think that will change. Yeah. So now we got tiny notes. Uh, so you've got the ability to control over your note length. And thankfully for this video, I actually didn't crash. So there you can see. Or I could even do a full long note. All right, half note. There, 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 and so on. And that is kind of it. Again, oh, I suppose I should stop soloing. And we'll hear my masterpiece before we go. All right, so there. Oh, I just soloed the uh, master. All right, so let's turn solo off there so we can hear everything together All right oh no oh no oh no oh no i crashed it okay at least you got to see one crash during this uh we don't get to hear my masterpiece all put together which is unfortunate your ears maybe don't bleed at the end of this one but yeah we've we've definitely we've definitely had some kind of a crash here uh, which is unfortunate also by the way if you do crash you can generally see the crash logs here uh but we've crashed hard uh, oh, 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 we might be back. We might be back. So maybe we can hear the masterpiece. Let's see what happens. Nope, something's muted. Something's muted. All right, strum sessions, you're muted. Okay, and I can't undo it. All right, never mind. And I can't save the track because of the limitation, so I can't save it and reload it. So yeah, y'all got spared today. Anyways, that is it. That is the rhythm. Um, again, available at zrhythm.org. It's early on. I, I can't think of a lot of reasons why I would recommend this over, say, uh, LMMS, Reaper, or various other ones I've looked at so far. Uh, but it, it, it's early on. It's a 1.0 alpha. It's a definitely an interesting project. And, um, you know, once once I get this stuff working, and, and I think part of what I find frustrating is I don't know what is a missing feature versus what is a bug versus is what is me using this on Windows. So you kind of run into a little bit of that. And again, you can really tell that that Windows isn't the primary platform. So this one probably actually works substantially better on a Linux machine. But I'm interested to hear your experiences down below. But it's nice to see another one coming into the
the ecosystem. Z Rhythm just hit 1.0 alpha. So if you are looking for a DAW and for some reason the existing options don't work for you and you're looking for something that is open source, uh, this could be a good one to check out. Of course, I will have all the links in the link down below. Also, again, you got two days left on that Humble Bundle if you were looking for, I think it was something like 13,000 loops and samples that are available in that, including a couple of VSTs, etc. cetera. Uh, do be sure to check that one out. It actually comes with a DAW as well, but uh, I did a video on it, different topic. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Interested to hear what you have to say. Goodbye.